<clears throat> Hello, my name is Danielle and I am doing, or I did a project for my genetics class, um, FDSci 205, um, in which I researched my family history for genetic diseases. Um, and the original goal was to see, based on what I found in my research, what the chances for my children are to have some of these diseases. Um, luckily enough, when I studied my family's background and my husband's background, um, there is not there was not any sign of genetic disorders. There was um, two cases, but they were far and spread out. So I decided to make pedigree charts to illustrate the different diseases that I researched. Um, but So they're based on a true story, but changed a little bit. The names are enhanced <laughs> to show how the genes are inherited. Um, I also changed the names to protect the privacy of those involved. Um, Let's see, so first of all, I researched the disease, so I'll just give you the generals of what the diseases are. So the first one we're going to talk about is familial hypercholesterolemia. Um, this is inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. Um, the disease is characterized by high cholesterol levels, specifically high levels of LDL, which if you take a nutrition of any kind, you know that that's bad cholesterol. Um, and another characteristic is early cardiovascular disease. This is a very common disorder. About 1 in 500 people in most countries have it, though in some places it is considerably lower. So, we've got this chart here of a um, hypothetical family pedigree. Um, we know that it's transmitted in an autosomal dominant manner, so we know that it's a body cell. Um, we know that as opposed to a sex cell, so each person gets one gene from each parent. Um, and this is dominant, and so if you if a child receives an affected, even just one affected gene from one of their parents, then they have the disease. So if we look here, we've got Rod and Donna. Rod is affected by the disease, and Donna is not. They have two children. Um, both of those children must have inherited an um, uh, affected gene from their father. Um, Stuart is affected. He marries Shauna. They have three children. The first is not affected, Matt. Matt is the first child and he's not affected. He marries Laura who is affected by the disease um, and they have two children who were both able to receive um, healthy genes from both parents. So that tells us that Laura must have had one affected and one unaffected gene. Um, Stuart and Shauna had another child named Rain and Rain married Lawrence. Rain was affected by the disease or is affected. Um, and she married Lawrence, who is not affected. And then they had three children, um, and their second child is affected by a disease, and the other two are not. So that once again tells us that um, Rain has one affected gene and one unaffected gene, because the children, two of the children, are not affected. Um, and then they have a third child named Krista, who married Dan. Um, Dan is not affected, but Krista is. So their children um, are likely have a chance at having the disease, but are not guaranteed to have the disease since Dan is not affected also. And we don't know if Krista is um, hymozygous or heterozygous for the gene. Um, you can figure that out through genetic testing and through looking at your family background, and I wasn't able to do that for them, um, as genetic testing can be expensive. <laughs> and so um, they know that they have a chance at having a child with that disease, but not guaranteed. Um, going back up to Rod and Donna, they had another son named Marty, who married Melanie. Marty is affected by the disease. Um, they have three children. Two of the three received the um, affected gene from their father. Um, Ryan went on to marry Sarah and have a daughter named Trudy. Trudy also is affected. Um, this is pretty typical of autosomal dominant diseases. Um, they do not skip generations normally. Um, females and males are equally likely to have the trait and affected children must have at least one affected parent, as we saw there. And as well, there is male-to-male -male transmission, meaning that the father can give it to the son. All right, so the next one we're going to talk about is cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. Um, so it's a little bit crooked there. There we go. Um, autosomal recessive, um, which means that um, we know again that it's a body cell. It has to do with the body cells and not the sex cells. <coughs> um, so if they, a child has to receive both genes that are affected from their, from their parents. Um, 
then they have inherited the disease. If they just inherit one affected gene from one of the parents and then a normal one for the other parent, then they are fine. They're carriers, but they're not affected by the disease. Um, so often this kind of disease comes to children whose parents are not affected by the disease because if both the parents are carriers, then the child can have the disease. Also, males and females are equally likely to inherit this disease as it is a body um, with the body cells. Um, this disease is characterized by the body's lack of ability to normally transport chloride and sodium across an epithelium. This leads to a buildup of thick, sticky mucus in the body, particularly the lungs. There are many symptoms, including a difficulty breathing, lung infections, sinus infections, and poor growth. Um, this disease is most common among Caucasians. One in 25 people of European descent are carriers, meaning that they have one affected gene. So if we look at their pedigree again, we've got Elliot and Gertrude. Elliot has deceased, and he was a carrier for the disease. Um, those two had four children. The first, Fred, was not affected, so he received um, both, both unaffected genes from his parents. Stacy, on the other hand, received one, the affected gene from her father, but the regular gene from her mother. So she is a carrier, who, and she married Norman, who is also a carrier. They have two children, and one of those children is affected by the disease, and the other one is a carrier also. Robert is affected by the disease. He, affect, or he inherited both affected genes from his parents. Um, Lucy is a carrier and married Josh, and then they have Harry, and Harry is completely normal, not even a carrier. Um, the next, going back to Ellie and Gertrude, their next um, child is a son named Bobby, um, who is a carrier. Um, he married Jill, and they have three children. Um, Nate and is a carrier, so he inherited that affected gene from his father. Andy is clear, clean and clear, doesn't have any, doesn't even carry it. Um, and then June is also a carrier. She must have um, inherited a gene from her father. Um, June and Matt are both carriers. June married Matt, they're both carriers, and they have a daughter named Danielle who um, received both affected genes from her parents and is affected. Then Elliot and Gertrude's last child is a daughter, Nancy, who is a carrier, married Harold, and they have two children, Michaela and Drew, who are both carriers also, but not affected by the gene. Um, so as we can see, this is pretty typical of autosomal recessive also, in that um, it's equally likely for males and females again. Um, the traits often skip generations. As we see, it went from, um, well, I guess we've got it, it's kind of spaced out there, but it often skips generations because um, carriers <coughs> Carriers do not have the disease, but they're still passing it on to their children. Um, uh, let's see, and affected children are born to unaffected parents, meaning the carriers. All right, and that is the end of part one. We will start part two here in just a second.